This is the second video in our lessons on series and parallel circuits. So to continue from our last video, we have one more slide on how to draw the schematic diagrams. And this is about putting the voltmeter and ammeter in the circuit so that they are appropriately measuring the things that they are supposed to measure. So remember that the voltmeters measure the voltage or the potential difference across two points and the ammeter measures the amperage or the flow of electrons, the, the charge through the current or the current of the circuit. So we cannot just place these anywhere we want in the circuit. We have to place them in very specific spots. So the parts in red here, the text, shows you the most important points that the current goes through the ammeter in this circuit and that the voltmeter is drawn across the resistor. So let's look at why that is. Since a voltmeter measures the voltage or the potential difference, it must be placed across the device you want to measure. That way you can measure the change on either side of the device. So we know here that a resistor is defined as something that will uh, reduce the voltage or reduce the potential across two points in a circuit. So if we leave the battery from here with a certain amount of voltage, whatever the voltage of the battery is, that voltage must be dropped across this resistor. So maybe we start out with 12 volts, and if there's only one resistor in the circuit, then all 12 of those volts must be dropped um, by the time we get to the other side of the resistor. So that on our way back to the negative terminal of the battery, we are left with a potential of zero. So the voltmeter must be placed so that we are sampling uh, the potential at one point and then sampling it again on the other side. Now looking at the ammeter, since the ammeter measures the current or the flow, it must be placed in such a way so the charges go through the device. So in this case we have the current going from positive to negative and we have all of the current place, all of the current going through the ammeter. Uh, think of measuring the current of a river that you're that you want to, to find out about. You have to be in the river if you want to measure the flow of the river itself. You can't be on the banks. So same way, the ammeter must be placed in series so that all of the current goes through the ammeter. Whereas we would say a voltmeter would be placed in parallel because the voltage is the same um, across the resistor as it is through the voltmeter because we are in a parallel circuit. So if you need to review that, look at our parallel circuit rules and series circuit rules in the last video. So now that we've gotten all the parts of a circuit, let's look at a couple of examples. Our first example is a parallel circuit. So how do we know it's a parallel circuit? Well, we have this 8 volt battery, and we know that all of the charge, all of the current will flow from the positive to the negative terminal. So we have the charge flowing, get my cursor back here. All of the charge flowing from here, if you're following along, um, down to this point right here, and if we're following our conventions, this we would say this is a, a branch point. So these are connected here, both this and here. So the charge has uh, three different options. It can go left through the 5 ohm resistor, it can go straight down through the 7 ohm resistor, or it can go to the right through the 9 ohm resistor. It cannot go through all three because once it follows one path, it continues until gets to this branch point and then continues on to the negative terminal of the battery. So each electron has to choose one spot to go. So if we remember our parallel adding rules for uh, total equivalent resistance, we have this 5 ohm, 7 ohm, and 9 ohm resistant resistor. We want to collapse this down. And that's what, we're, what uh, we will be doing next. is called collapsing the circuit such that we draw a circuit that looks like it only has one resistor in it. And this, the resistance of this resistor is the total equivalent resistance of the circuit. So we draw this at with 1R, and we either say REQ for equivalent resistance, or in this case R sub P for the resist, total resistance in parallel. So same voltage for the battery, 8 volts, um, but now we have collapsed down the circuit so that 5, 7, and 9 um, all become this one equivalent resistance resistor. So looking at our parallel resistor adding rules, we have 1 over our equivalent resistance equals 1 over the sum of all of these. So we have 1 over 5 ohms plus 1 over 7 ohms plus 1 over 9 ohms. And so we get an answer that's um, 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 0 0.454 
But this number is not our final answer because we have solved for 1 over the equivalent resistance. So what we have to do is take the inverse of both sides so that we're solving for the actual equivalent resistance and we get 1 over 0 0.454 ohms giving us 2.20 ohms. Actually this is not actually in ohms. But our final answer, 2.20 ohms. Notice here that the 2.20, the equivalent resistance, is less than any one individual resistor. This is true for all parallel circuits. So if you are a charge going through here, you have three options. Uh, and each one of those will be some amount of resistance, but since you have three branches, overall there's less resistance in the circuit because all of the charges have three different chances, three different options to go through. So now that we have found this equivalent resistance is 2.20 ohms and we have our voltage V. Looking at our variables, we have V, we have R. The only other one that we might need to know is the total current through those. So looking at Ohm's law, we have V equals IR. The only one that we don't know is I. So we can now solve for that because we collapsed the circuit. So the next question asks us to solve for the total current. And we know the voltage drop across the whole thing. We know the resistance, now this is the equivalent resistance, and so if we plug in our numbers, uh, we have our 8 ohm resistor and we have the resistance which we just solved for. If we plug that in, we get, um, again we're solving for the current here, if we plug that in we get a current of 3.64 amps. So at any one point on the main circuit here, we can find our total current, which is 3.64 amps. So now, now that we know the total current uh, for the entire thing, uh, we can find the voltage, well we don't need to, we don't need the current for the, the voltage drop across each resistor, um, but the next question kind of leads us to the, the final question here. So the, the voltage across each resistor, looking at your parallel rules, uh, since it is in parallel, we can do what I call the finger test. So at this point right here, right after we leave the battery, any charge has 8 volts of potential. And so unless it hits a resistor, it still has 8 volts of potential. So that's all along this path and all along this branch. Up until it hits any one of these resistors, we would say that there are 8 volts of potential on the side. And then looking at the other side, you can place another finger on this side and say that we know we have zero volts because it has any charge has to have zero volts of potential on the other side of the battery. So we can go all along this branch here and know that the voltage, or the uh, potential is zero volts. So that is also true until we hit one of these resistors. So if we did our two finger test, we have one finger up here and this, as long as we don't lift up our finger or cross a resistor, it has eight volts of potential. And then on any other side of the resistor, as we found going the other way, we have zero volts. So across each one of these, we have eight volts to zero volts. We have here eight volts to zero volts. And then across our nine ohm resistor, eight volts to zero volts. So across each resistor, we have a voltage drop of eight volts. Now we found the total current, uh, but we don't know the current and this is actually poorly worded, it's not the current drop, it is the actual current through each resistor. The way we talk about voltage is in terms of voltage drop, and the way we talk about current is going through any resistor. So change that wording there. Um, but now we're looking at each individual resistor, and we need to apply Ohm's law to each resistor separately. So the total current we know is not going through any one resistor, it's going through one of the three. So the current at each branch point is going to split. Part of it will go through the 5 ohm, part of it will go through the 7, part of it will go through the 9. And so imagine that you are driving to work and you know that there is a 9 car accident on this road, a 7 car accident on this road, and a 5 car accident on this road. Um, most of the traffic is going to be on the 9 the 9 car accident road. So most of the cars will be flowing through the, the branch that has a five-car accident, the, the lower resistance. The same thing is true for electrons. 
So we will have charges, more charges going through the 5 ohm resistor, um, even uh, fewer going through the 7 ohm, and the least going through the 9 ohm resistor. So we can solve for that now that we have, we know the voltage drop across each resistor. I'm looking at Ohm's law, V equals IR. We know the resistance in each branch, 9 ohms, 7 ohms, and 5 ohms. So with each one, we can solve for the current. But this will not be the total current. So solving for this, uh, V equals IR, we have the current, sorry, it came up in front of my picture, um, the current through the 5 ohm resistor, we rearranged our equation, 8 volts divided by 5 ohms, gives us 1.6 amps of current going through that first branch on the left. Looking at the second resistor, uh, the current through the 7 ohm resistor is the voltage of 8 volts dropping across that resistor, divided by our resistance of 7 ohms, gives us 1.14 amps. And then our last branch um, of our 9 ohm resistor, we have a voltage drop across that one of 8 volts as well, and divided by 9 ohms, that resistor gives us 0 0.9 amps. Now one thing to notice about these is that the individual currents must add to the total. If we have a certain amount of current going through here, and we solve that to be 3.64 amps, we know that all of that current must be distributed through the three of these.